It's time for another episode of Studios Undone, the series where I infiltrate the studios of other YouTubers and creators to see how they do things, ask them some questions, and maybe do a little testing and review of their space and equipment. When I think about today's featured creator, two things come to mind. Collaborations and New York City. Even though they're originally from Texas, they energetically navigate the plane where creativity meets technology with an unrelenting fervor that I associate with the New York hustle. Not the dance, but the respectable impatience I associate with New Yorkers that suggests, hey, I got things to do here. And that enthusiasm is not only inspiring, but a vital component of a good collaboration, which explains why their video catalog contains guest appearances from virtually every big name in their space. Oh yeah, and her name rhymes with Peachy. What's up guys, my name is Sarah Dichi, rhymes with Peachy. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and I just fed the chickens. All right, let's give Sarah a call. What's up, Peachy fam? Today, we're talking about Jake Paul's 69 step program to financial freedom. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Are you still available to shoot that tour today? Of course, super excited. Do you know where you're going? Yeah, well, New York, I hope, or that intro I just recorded won't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lower Manhattan. Oh yeah? Are you by the water by any chance? I have no idea why you're asking me that. Sure. Perfect. Give me 15 minutes. Yeah, pretty sweet, eh? Can you believe that it's stock footage? Yeah, wow, and what a great segue. Storyblocks is an impressive collection of stock footage covering a wide range of subjects with unlimited downloads and 4K video. Am I getting paid for this, or...? They're also amply supplied with backgrounds, overlays, and After Effects templates, and the interface is easy to use and navigate, and the clips are royalty-free for both personal and commercial use, so you can use them as much as you want, wherever you want. Do you need some help? I could... I, I feel like you're not kneeling the lines perfectly, you know. I thought it. No, I thought it was. I mean, I was it's fine. I'll let's let's just wrap this up. So if you think you can take advantage of a quality, you got me all off my game now. Uh, click the link in the description below. You can use my code Saradici for ten percent off your first purchase of website, or you know that's. It's not even the right sponsor. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. There's no Saradici code. Just go ahead. So if you think you could take advantage of quality stock footage and effects. Make sure you check out my link to Storyblocks in the description below. Okay, Sarah, well, I think it's time for your studio review. Oh gosh, the clipboard? Indeed. But first, let's talk about your lighting. So my favorite light in the office is the peach. This is a custom neon peach I had get done at Let There Be Neon. It's only two blocks away here in New York, so it was really fun to get it done locally. I also have a cool video about it. Um, and then this is one of those just canvas things, but it adds a little bit more color. This guy, oh, I can't turn it on with my home app. Those were turned on via my home with smart plugs. But this one right here, this is the Aperture 120D. It's the first version. Um, so, you know, you don't have the simplified light box controls um, and it has the Light Dome 1. So version ones of all of them, um, you would think I would keep up with the times, but a light's a light, beautiful soft light. And it really makes uh, these videos easy, no matter if it's dark like this, or if I have the overhead lights on, which are oh my god oh they're kind of terrible um but i'm working on that you'll have to come back for a version two so when i think of you i think of podcasts that's, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a thing that creative life there you go stop plugging things okay. apple Podcasts, spotify <laughs> is this where you do it i know you do yes. some on location too but oh, this totally. is your are you ready for the cool part it's a whiteboard desk it's just like my desks over there um, they're from Fully, and I'm so obsessed with the standing um, Fully desk that I was like, listen guys, can you do the whiteboard desk? 
but as your conference room table and they did it and watch. Check this out. This is also sit and stand. The sit stand whiteboard desk, whiteboard conference table. Dude, next with, level. With what do you got in here? Outlets? Is that USB? Yep. Okay. So just really everything that you need. Well, that's and well it's, dampened too. Yeah, exactly. And so not only is it good for podcasts, you know, it's just set up. I got the new Rode um, Procaster thing. I'm still deciding how much I like this. I'm a little undecided right now because it messed that up my first podcast. This mic isn't on, right? Um, oh, I was kind of talking. I was kind of talking. I really like this desk, yeah. table, conference table, whatever we call it. Yeah, and it's a good it's a good place to film my videos too, because I didn't have a table where you could actually see the rest of my office, so I was just shooting into walls, which is never fun. I like this shot. Depth, it looks you know? good. Yeah. And you get a little bit of that like fill from underneath. Exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, Sarah. Yes. 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 Because we're starting something new now with these studios undone. I now have a top prize for things that I really like, and I really like your whiteboard yeah. studio, you get yourself a purple star. Oh, this is so exciting. Do you see that, guys? Try to get on this level. It almost matches my nail polish. So one of the first videos that I saw of yours, I'm sure this might be true for a lot of people, mm -hmm. is the how to be yep. like Casey video. Yep. Took off for you a little bit. If somebody were to make a video now of how to be, how to shoot like Sarah Dietschy, mm -hmm. what would you expect to be in it? Ooh, that's a good question. I know. It would it you would probably be let's let's see I've been taking a lot of I've been doing a lot of laptop reviews so it would be maybe taking a laptop not just saying the specs but maybe filming some B-roll of you out and about with the laptop doing some Premiere and Resolve export tests I use Sony cameras I have a certain um, color style I use Film Convert so maybe you would have punchy contrast and saturation you'd have personality. You know, I, I want my audience to see me the way I actually am. Um, a lot of times people will be like, oh, she's a try hard. I'm like, oh man, I guess you wouldn't like me in real life because I'm I'm kind of a spaz in real life sometimes. Would you say a blazer is involved in the Serdici look? Maybe, it's it's probably a third of my look when I'm feeling a fancy. Sure, so we've already talked about the light. This is your 120D. Got on a yeah. C-stand. I'm moving it for us so we can actually have some light over here. Perfect. That should be the correct <laughs> exposure. Go ahead and turn that on. Okay, striking. How's that look? Is it nice and soft? Is it nice and soft? Hey, what are you writing down over there? So I was going to ask you about some of the art that you have up. What's the one you have? Oh, there? is that what you have? So getting down and dirty here. This beautiful piece is by Timmy Ham. My mom actually commissioned it um, for me for Christmas last year. So she she knows I love the Empire State Building. I can see that the Empire State Building right there. And you got a big peach. Yep. It's nice. Yeah. It looks good. And then this is my friend Michael Shellis. I made a video about the art piece. Are you just standing in front of me during yeah, the video? Yeah, this is my video now. <laughs> Um, so sorry, tell me what you think about your studio. <laughs> well, now your studio, you're doing the art, the, the art. Um, so this, I'll try to not move. We were like, this, Oh yeah, let's take a minute and talk about the floor. This floor okay. does not get a star. It's, uh, it's, got, some, it's got some life to it. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Um, How do you deal with that when you do your videos? You just try to like, I, don't I move? usually don't move a lot. Yeah. <laughs> First just, step one is don't move. Hi guys, welcome to a new video. My name is Sarah, um, and I have a rug over there. So does that should, cut down a lot? It does a little bit, yeah. I should probably put a rug over here, but then I'm moving the desk a lot. It like, would it would help the sound goes. a little bit, no, but yeah. the sound in here is not bad considering no, it's, how high the ceilings are. So I'm getting some extra panels over here, and I, I'm gonna get a um, like a curtain that hangs and cuts the room in half for right. my podcast. Um, and so literally, this is only one third of the sound paneling, I would say, um, and it already does a really good job. So it also looks helps. professionally made. Thank you. Well, I don't, I I don't know if you I saw the Potato Jet video. No. But he uh, well, looks no, like I did watch that. he stapled like a piece of foam to the center of his ceiling or whatever. Potato Jet. This is one, I would say this is one or two notches above that. Oh, so thank you. I think. I'll give you uh, some points for that. I think maybe a little bit more, don't you think? So as you can tell, I'm a fan of like graffiti vibes. Yeah. Because even Timmy Hams is that way. Um, and then we have the Seamless where I'm telling you, if you have a setup where you have to continually set up C-stands, 
set it all up, you're never going to use a backdrop. Agreed. So the fact that it's just up there and I can just use these over here to bring them up and down, it's just so easy. It's so easy. You also do storage way up and out of yep. the way. Yep. Is that hard for you to get to? Oh no, I have. I actually that have a That was a height ladder. joke. Oh, well, we're not all freakishly tall like you. I'm normal height, okay? You're just weirdly small, I think. This is the AK QLED TV. So many people ask me, what is up with the background on your podcast? And it's just this. And this is also a background that comes with any podcast that that creative life is Gerald Watch Undone. Watch where you're throwing that thumb around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is really cool because look, Samsung TVs have different ambient modes um, where you can just have different backgrounds nice. and you can color them different. Right now I just have it like on black and white. Um, is purple an option? But purple is an option. Do you, want, do you want me to make it purple for you? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Do you want points in this uh, uh, review that's, or not? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't even know how to do blue or purple. I think that uh, we oh. all feel a little betrayed here yeah. and lied to. So. Oh, look, it's turning the actual background that color. Okay. Not purple. It's fine. it's fine. What I'd like to know is the contrast. If you want to throw an actual insure, if not, you can skip mm -hmm. it from you know, what it was like in Texas to what it was like in New York. Mm -hmm. And if the New York scene, hustle, vibe, whatever, has impacted your work in some kind of way. In Texas, it was a beautiful bubble to grow up in, right? Uh, grew up in a suburb, we had a backyard, you could go and play. When I was a senior in high school, it was my Meemaw's graduation present to me. It was a first trip to New York. Um, but I thought I was gonna be Texas girl, rest of my life, the moment I landed in New York, I was like, hold up, what is going on here? It was so captivating that I left that trip. I will move back here one day. Like for at least a year, one day I'm coming back. And now like four years later, yeah. is it still, you yeah. still feel the same way? Yeah, I love it. I fell in love so much with the lifestyle of New York. The fact that there's literally 8 million people in a tiny slice of land. You know, LA is so spread out, Texas is so spread out. So literally just by, you know, per square mile, you have this concentration of creative people, of business driven people, of there's such a beautiful mix of things. And I have really benefited of being in a creative community that is just beyond YouTube. You know, I, I really love meeting people that are maybe adjacent to me in what they do, but not exactly what I do. So, um, these are the two workstations. This is mine. This is my, this is my pride and joy right here. <laughs> this guy is a 49 inch display. And of course we got fully sit and stand. As you can tell, it's a whiteboard. So it's called my accountant. I probably should. This is 49 inches guys. Can I pull up a premiere timeline for you? This is a Main Gear F131 custom PC. Water cooled. Yep, water cooled. Custom loop. Yep, 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 yep. This is the only monitor arm that I found that could hold a 49 inch and the yeah, weight it looks of like this. It's like solid metal. It's intense. It was like $150, but I was like, I need the room. Um, okay, let's see. Is that that Elgato light? Yeah, yeah. watch this. Ready? Nice. And I have it connected to the stream deck, so I sometimes do film here. So you, I, I have some do you good setups. Stream or is it you just? I don't. It? Um, I stream. A K, I used to stream like Q and A's, um, but now I'll just like sit here for another angle to film. I don't stream a lot anymore. Okay. But yeah, check this out. I just I love like forty nine inch life. Sign me up. This is a pretty good setup. We get it. It's a wide screen. It's fine. What's this? What do you got in here? Um. Okay. These are as you can tell. If we just have a moment here, here, and then if you also turn around and look behind you, these are literally my favorite oh, cool. drawers. They swing out. And so it's a really good way to see everything that's in there. So if you want to come look down on it, this is, is it where all my stable? batteries. So it doesn't like topple when you have them um, I mean, I have most of my heavy stuff on the bottom, but I, you could, I need to adjust the bottom ones. Okay. Yeah. So what do you got? Yeah, walk us through what you got. Oh yeah, so we got Canon batteries, Sony, for Canon GH5s, or for, for Blackmagic? Uh, Blackmagic. I just call them Canon. LPE6. Oh. Like, yeah, yeah. Canon I mean, they're Canon form. Oh, yeah. Got all their stuff. These are lights and D filters. Action cams. 
Labeled, mics. Yep. What does this say? On cam audio? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Oh. oh. I stuffed the... What is this? The door I, I doesn't open Oh god, this isn't normal. I took... Oh, I just hit them. <laughs> and hitting, hitting the host. <laughs> cables. I mean, it's reasonably well organized, but are your cables a big tangled knot? I mean, those are just my XLRs. I think they're decent. Yeah. And... That's okay. That's pretty good. They're, for you people out there, for you musicians out there, they're over under. Do you know what that is? Over under. Over under in cables. I don't think so, I know what you mean. Here's a little educational moment. This is something that Drill just did for me. And you unroll it and look, there's some kinks in it. You know, it could be better. It could be better. You don't like the way I rolled your cable? No, I don't. So over under is basically you go over and you go under. You go over. So back in the day when I was playing in a band and guitar. I can already see what'll happen. It'll splay out. Exactly. Yeah. I did this with my quarter inches and boom. I'll be honest. Okay. I've been playing guitar for 20 something years. No one ever taught you that? I've managed cables for a long time and I've never learned this over under trick oh ever. Gosh. That was like my first initiation into the band. They were like, Sarah. You're folding, you're folding them wrong. Does this get a star? Tell you what. Yes. You get a star. Thank you. I would like to thank my parents. I, would like I to learned thank something. Everyone who's believed in me. But so yeah. you got two GH5s, two, are those pocket 4Ks? Or no, so one's a 6K? One's a 6K, yeah. one's a 4K, just because I was curious. And I also already had, I already had a couple Micro Four Thirds and a couple Canon. And yeah. it's a good combo with the 12 to 60 and then using the Sigma 3514. Great lens. A7 III and... A7S II. A7S II. The classic. How long have you had that camera? <sighs> Since it came out. Do you like the 35 focal length a lot? Uh, that's a funny question, because look at all of them. 35, 35, 16 to 35, and then 17 to 28, sure. which is like, you know, um, 35. Yeah. I'm a big 35 fan myself. I love 35. It's right. just so, you know. 35 fan club. What up? Is that... That's our official... That's our sign. Okay. Patent pending. So speaking of the creative energy of everything mm -hmm. and working with some people, you've scored some pretty sweet collaborations, everything from, I don't know, MKBHD, Gary V. Would you say that there's some tips that you give to some aspiring YouTubers, other creators out there mm -hmm. that might look at those collaborations and think, wow, that's awesome. What would you say to them to score those same sit downs? Mm -hmm. From 2011 to 2016, I went from zero to 3,500 subscribers. And a lot of times that is the more interesting story. But since I couldn't offer people views, that's when I offered people good videos. So I literally started with just my friend. She was getting her portraits being taken by this local photographer in Nashville. And that was my first Creative Spaces TV episode. And he wanted to make it because I offered him, uh, who doesn't want to talk about themselves? I offered him a really good profile on himself, which was the first episode of Creative Spaces TV. And of course, he was so excited to show off his office and show off him. Um, and that was that first episode. And of course, once you get that first episode, it's much easier to share to people. And that's really how you start that initial audience too, because they, I'm sure they're going to send that off to 20 of their friends. And then their mom who loves it is going to send it in an email chain to 100 of her friends. So you would suggest Value. like Value. building the audience that way and then leveraging the audience yeah. once you have it. To it's, it's all, it's literally like, like you're either providing value in your innate ability of like you are super talented in XYZ or you have an existing audience where you can highlight someone and then eventually it becomes a mix of both. I think the the mix of both is ultimately the you know the best route. This is also a sit stand desk which I love. This is the LG 32 UL Ultrafine. Um, I'm obsessed with this display. It's so amazing, actually. Oh, it's not scaled properly. Terribly but organized desktop. I know. Oh, what gosh. is that? Oh gosh. Display light. Display light. What was that? What were those notes? Because you have this is a whiteboard. Everything's a whiteboard. Yeah. Everything's a whiteboard. Which is great, yeah. so that you can take notes. Yep. But what Do if you I... don't? But what are the notes for? Because over there you just wrote a squiggle. Yeah. I follow up on maybe like. 40% of the notes. Okay. And the other what ones are just to get out. Display light means. Those are the most two generic words. I know, right? It's not even like fix the light, it's just light. 
These are my two favorite laptops last year. I'm a big fan. Asus Sinbook Pro Duo. Two displays. Two displays. I feel like you really like screens. I do love screens. You're so right. That's a good... So far... And then two on one. Based on what I point out, I'd be like, tell me about this, tell me about that. And you're just like, that's that's another story. By the way, have you seen these screens? And then you got this funky chair. Oh my gosh. Chair. So when I'm editing, mm -hmm. I keep the core intact so I, I can work out a little bit. So this keeps me moving. You getting this? Can I get a star for this? No. Put that away. When you did the Casey video, you had... You had a spike, right? Right. So in hindsight, if you were to review your spike now, do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Obviously, it's hard to look at something and say that's a mm -hmm. bad thing when because you are where you are now. But if you were to, I guess, advise in some way, do you think the spike was a good idea? Was it something you could handle? I mean, handle? I was ready for it. The yeah. people, the people who get the spike before they actually create content, understand who they are as a creative, they get kind of screwed. I was literally making videos for like more than five years before that. That makes sense. And then I was making consistently two years before that. For people that don't know the spike they're referring to, you went from what, like four to 40 or something like that, was it? So I literally went from 3,500, 4,000, um, in the span of one day, 4,000 to 40. And then in the span of a month, 4,000 to 100, but then it was back on the grind because I was literally going up a thousand subscribers, down a thousand, like, I was teetering because this newfound audience, oh, what are you doing? You show Creative Space TV, but I kind of want to see your face because I saw your face in the Casey video. Who are you? You're a YouTuber, show us more. So there was a confusion of what type of content was I going to make? It might sometimes be frustrating to my audience where one week I'm making a video about a new two-in-one laptop and the next week I'm making a video about like my favorite note-taking app. Hopefully there's always going to be an audience. You can always bounce back from a bad video I feel like, but if I'm passionate about the topics that I'm talking about, those videos are going to be so much better. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. This is like, I never want people to come back here. This is just like storage? gear, storage. I'll peek my head and I'll let you know if you need to see it. Peek your head. There's stuff back there. Is this like... Was this an elevator? So honestly, when I was previewing this space, I was like, oh, sick, like a storage closet. And they're like, no, you can't go back there. Like it's sealed off. I guess so, right? Yeah, but we have storage up here. That's helpful. So this was the elevator then, I yeah. guess, right? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Good news is you passed. Okay. So here is your score sheet. Feel free to take a look at that. Amazing. It's confidential. It's only for you. That's the official Gerald and Dunn score sheet. Okay. And uh, you got two purple stars, so. I'm pretty proud of that Good. because I think I'm the first. What happened to the one that I put on your sleeve? Oh, it must have fell off. Can you pass me that score a sheet again real fallen. quick? No. <laughs> What's up, Peachy fam? Today we're talking about Jake Paul's 69 stamp to fight. Stamp? He's making stamps now, y'all. So we're in your suit. Oh, my new clipboard's got a rattle. Get it together. <laughs> Heavy duty. <laughs> okay. Serious face. Okay. Okay, Sarah, I think it's time for your studio review. <laughs> wow. Naturally, I'm an introvert in that I truly do recharge when I'm alone. That was a weird sentence. <laughs> when I'm alone. <laughs> when I'm alone. <laughs> Storyblocks is an impressive collection of stock footage. For <laughs> good start. It's good. All right, that's a wrap. Weird.